G'day, I'm Tim Thompson, and today is a quick video about wire choice. <laughs> You've probably noticed that there's three main types of wire, whether you're looking at plain wire or barbed, and that is soft, medium tensile, and high tensile. Some manufacturers have brand names for these things, but basically it means that there's less carbon in soft wire and there's more carbon in high tensile wire. And this means that the wire behaves differently. High tensile wire allows you to use a smaller diameter of wire and strain it much tighter because it's much more resistant to stretching than soft wire. And that's why the wide scale adoption of high tensile wire has changed the way that we build end assemblies. You don't see too many like these anymore and the ones that you do tend to be failed. Of course, there's an elephant in the room too, and that is cost. With soft wire, you get rolls of 500 meters. With high tensile two and a half mil wire, you get a roll of one and a half kilometers. And there's not a lot of cost difference between them. So it's much more economical these days to be using high tensile wire where you can. And it also lowers the amount of knots and joins that you have to make in your fence. If you stretch high tensile wire too much, it becomes brittle and breaks because of all the carbon bonds. Whereas soft wire is much easier to tie off and if you kink it, it doesn't break. So when should you use each? Well, it probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise, but high tensile wire for the majority of normal fences is now the way to go. You can put it under much higher strain and that produces a much stronger, better looking, more resilient fence. But there's still some situations where soft is a better choice. Let's have a look at a couple. The first good use of soft wire is in areas with extreme temperature fluctuations. And this is simply because if you increase and decrease the temperature of wire, you're basically stretching and relaxing it. So soft wire in some situations is gonna end up with a longer lasting fence than high tensile. The same's true for fire prone areas. Soft wire, because it's got a larger diameter, has much more volume of steel in it. And so it takes a lot longer to heat up in a fire than high tensile wire does. And even if it does heat up in a fire and it stretches a bit, it's not gonna give way and become brittle like high tensile wire will. So if you're fencing off areas, say along a creek or near a bush block, and you're concerned about the odd grass fire and things like that, then soft wire in a larger diameter might be the appropriate choice for that fence for you. The other thing that people don't realize about soft versus high tensile wire is it should affect your post spacing. Ideally, soft wire should be on a three to five meter post spacing and high tensile wire should not be any smaller than a five meter post spacing. This is because of the amount of pressure that's applied to posts when stock or other objects hit the fence. Soft wire can give a lot more. So a tighter spacing between posts doesn't matter so much because you've still got bounce in the fence. Whereas if you put high tensile wire on a narrow post spacing, say three or four meters between posts along the fence line, then there's nowhere for that wire to give and move. It's gonna put a lot more pressure on the posts. And if you ask the wire manufacturers, they'll tell you that. The problem is most people don't even think about the question. And it's interesting to point out that high tensile wire only stays straight when it's under strain, whereas soft wire tends to maintain its integrity and is far more resistant to sag when it's loose. So if you're using high tensile wire, spread your posts out a bit further, save some money, and actually, strangely enough, increase the strength and performance of your fence. Last but not least, once you've decided on the type of wire you want on your fence, don't mix and match. Use the same consistent wire all the way through the fence. For example, you wouldn't run soft wire on top of high tensile prefabricated mesh because you'd end up with two parts of the fence behaving very differently and you'd end up with a very poorly performing fence. Guys, I hope you find these tips useful. If you do, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag and I'll see you next week.